longer white collar jobs. They are nowhere to be found. The population is increasing on a daily basis and the government cannot provide all the needed jobs for the bobbing youths. In the so. history of Holy we've Communion, never sir, that we've got... never heard that think, somebody contacted so. the from the other person I before. Think so. Not that I mean to undermine polytechnics, they do a good job, but university education is actually more valuable. Hello, dear viewers. I'm delighted to welcome you to yet another edition of Crossfire, reaching you from the Advent Cable Network Nigeria Television, ACN TV. I am Olusegun Emmanuel Akela. Remember Crossfire is a program that treats controversial topics on so many diverse issues surrounding the family, the church, and the society. It's a friendly discussion where we just raise pertinent issues. However, you are left to decide where you stand. Our focus today is on the society, and of course with special focus on skill acquisition or formal education. I'm sure you agree with me that in these contemporary times, youths are more prone towards acquiring skills to earn a living. Parents, on the one hand, tend to enforce formal education for their children, and they're usually proud to state the academic degrees their children have attained. On the other hand, looking at the rate of unemployment in our society and the high number of unemployed graduates every year, one will wonder the relevance and the significance of formal education. To discuss this interesting topic, we have two young gentlemen. They are Mr. Nonso Eziaku, who will be speaking for formal education, and Mr. Chinedu Okpara, who will be speaking for skill acquisition. You're both welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Yes. Uh, I think we can get right into the topic. Let me start with you, Mr. Nonso, uh, since you'll be speaking for formal education. Uh, in the state we are in, of course, in Nigeria, do you think it's only f people who have formal education that can be successful in Nigeria? Uh, uh, I'll just begin by saying, well, not everyone who has formal education is successful, but okay. given the question you asked, um, Given the state of Nigeria society today, I think it's a heavy prerequisite to be successful, to have a chance in having a life or having um, some sort of status in the mm. society. Mm. It's a heavy prerequisite to have formal education. Mm. But you can also blame that on, like, because of our colonization and all of that. But it is, is it indeed? But it's not the only way to. There are people who didn't have formal education and are successful. So okay. that's why we're even having this debate in the first place. Yes. Because yes. skill acquisition is also an option. Okay. Yeah. But for you, would you place more emphasis if you see a group of youths, would you place more emphasis, just like our parents to say, you know, f formal education is number one before any other thing? Or if they actually have an uh, opportunity to gain skills, which would you, wouldn't you just say, no, formal education, go on? Oh. Well, if your question is saying, if I pit both of them together, mm -hmm. I'll go for formal education. formal education. Given where we are today right now, I'd, I'd love that my children have formal education. Okay. Mr. Chinedu, um, would you say that a person can be successful in Nigeria without formal education? Because, of course, you are speaking for skill acquisition. Yes, of course. I will say that every day, anytime. Okay. Because um, when we try to talk about education, I mean, it, it's defined in diverse forms um, okay. as education being a pathway mm. out of poverty. Mm. And then, of course, there are several forms of education, not just the formal education that we know. There is formal education, there is informal education, yes. and then, of course, there is non-formal education. Mm. So uh, it depends on what aspect of education that you know you taught yourself from mm. um, that actually determines the level of um, success that you attain. So one cannot actually put in put formal education as a prerequisite uh, standard mm -hmm. for you to be successful in the society. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and of course, like he actually mentioned, there are several people who we know, notable names in the society that are successful, we are successful, and they never had um, any formal, formal education. education. You can mention Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. his computer is everywhere, mm -hmm. Apple, 
you can mention Mary Kay, even governor's wife, president's wife, <laughs> are all using those products. They never had any formal education. You can mention Michael Faraday, who gave us electricity. He had no formal education. You can mention Jan, the WhatsApp that we use today. Okay. He was the one who invented. I can mention the list. You have not so mentioned much. Nigerians. And <laughs> you're mentioning these ones are over there. Of course, in Nigeria, I'm, yeah. I'm also Alekija for, for, for sure. She okay. had no formal education, but she became a business tycoon mm -hmm. and, of course, became one of the richest women in the world. So, I mean, the list is so just long, and um, they had no formal education, but they were successful. So, I can't actually attach formal education mm -hmm. as a basic for anybody to be successful. Okay. So, even for our youth in Nigeria today, um, would you say, you know, in, in, a, in an order of preference that school acquisition should be the priority for, for youths in our own generation? The, the thing is, when, when you say skill, skill acquisition, skill acquisition is also a form of education. Exactly. So, but the thing is, when you say formal, formal yes. it means uh, you, are, you, are, you are constrained within an institution. Exactly. Deliberate education that is actually with a curriculum and uh, maybe some exam, examination to actually exactly. determine whether you have a certificate or not. Mm -hmm. But skill acquisition is a form of education, only that sure. probably you are actually attaining the practical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, the formal education that we are to, uh, talking about is meant to, you you know, show you through the pathway of the practical, uh, uh, theoretical part of whatever skill that you are trying to acquire or you are interested in. And then, of course, show you the practical um, aspect of it as well. But then when you come back to Nigeria, that where we are today, yes. you can't actually say that that is what formal education is. And that is why it has become a debate. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are not even supposed to be debating, I mean, with something like this, because for you to go through the walls of education, whether formal, informal, or non-formal, it means you are attaining knowledge and then, of, of course, course, you are acquiring skills. Of course, of course. Thank you very much. Mr. Nonso, now, what would you say uh, the benefits of formal education. Of course, you've also said there are different ways to acquire this knowledge and so on and so forth. But what would you say is the practical benefits of you know going through the formal education, going through school, secondary school, university, and so on? Okay, I want to give uh, a quick example. Um, I might teach physics for the next one minute on this show. <laughs> okay. um, speed and velocity. Mm -hmm. So um, speed is general. I mean, something moving, covering distance within a certain time. Mm -hmm. But, but velocity is putting that speed in a certain direction. Okay. Yeah, so um, one who understands speed alone mm. may not be the fastest, maybe car race or something. But one who understands velocity and acceleration and all of those things will end up being um, uh, more shrewd, mm -hmm. um, faster, and even a bit better in, uh, in, in, uh, in finishing a race. Mm -hmm. yeah, so formal education, like he rightly said also, is putting you within the walls of an institute. So, if we were all given the ability to learn, in which we are all given, and by the way, he's very, very right with saying education is, um, like, it's not as constrained as we are seeing it, whether informal or formal or non-formal. Yeah, yeah. Because when I'm looking at education and learning, we are educated by God, giving um, certain attributes in our body to learn when we see anything. Mm -hmm. And then I'm wondering, far they give us electricity, mm -hmm. but we have to go through formal education to learn, to learn. electricity. But yeah. meanwhile, this guy didn't have formal education. Exactly. So how could it be? So everyone could learn something that we see all around us. But then again, if everyone learned a particular thing, other things wouldn't be learned as well. Mm -hmm. And that's the essence of formal education. education. Because your rights here um, will be uh, uh, channeled and directed towards where you feel like you resonate best with. Mm -hmm. That's why we have doctors, and that's why we have engineers, and that's mm -hmm. why we have, say, um, I don't know, barbers or whatever. Yeah. I mean, because there's, there, there's a room for you to choose what you're so passionate about and then go through a conference of people who know this better than you. Mm -hmm. So as I, I, I think the, the nag here or the, what, what, what bites people here is the constraint. Constraint, yes. The ability to contain you and not allow you to just mm -hmm. be... Uh, 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 um, Free. Uh, exuberant yeah. <laughs> with your passion and your okay. okay. So I, I, I will go with that definitely. I like where, where uh, if there's an institute and you're being governed maybe by certain good principles, mm -hmm. yes, you can put a, yeah, uh, you can put your, you can put your education and then whatever you're learning to, to okay. do. Use. Okay. How about you, Mr. Chinedu? Well, he's saying you'll be able to learn uh, using physics, the speed and velocity and all of that. I don't know if you entirely agree with that. If you please. For you, what would you say is the benefit of placing emphasis on skill acquisition, being actually practical and not just uh, learning theoretical things as compared to, you know... You uh, know, the, the truth about all of this is that, uh, I mean, 
from the onset of mankind, I believe that God gave each and every one of us an ability. Mm -hmm. That in itself is skill. Yeah. Now, um, whether you pass through um, the education walls mm -hmm. or not, you have an inborn ability in you. Mm -hmm. And we should learn to understand that it's actually your skill that gets you a job, not your education. Because if you look at the contemporary world today, everybody is interested in what you're bringing on board. Nobody is interested in what you are trying to, whether you have master's degree, whether you have PhD, nobody is interested in that. They are asking you of your experience, which means they play less emphasis on the formal education thing that we are talking about. And then, of course, uh, if you look at what is happening today, people pass through the walls of formal education, they come out without any skill. And that is the reason why they are, they are not able to get jobs. Mm. So I would say that uh, more emphasis should be placed on skill acquisition. And the funny thing is that when we talk about skill acquisition, I think we'll try to push it more to the vocational skills. Yes. You know, yes. whenever anybody hears skill acquisition, mm. where their mind goes to first is tailoring, barbing uh, saloon, yes, yes. shoe making, <laughs> bead making, all and all of yeah. those. Yeah. Those are vocational skills. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking about skills, I give an example of myself. When I left university, I had missing script issue. While I was waiting, I came to Abuja, and then somebody gave me one task to, um, to carry out. They had a conference um, at Sheraton. And because I already have skills in fiddling with computers, mm. I was able to do one thing that all his staff were not able to do. I came as a volunteer to be paid 3,000 naira at the end of the day. <laughs> and after I finished that particular thing, he called me once. He's a Yoruba man mm. in, in UK. Mm. He called me and said, I don't know, we don't have anybody in Abuja. Can you please be here for us? Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't ask me whether I went through a, um, any he formal education formal war. Yeah. He was not interested in that. Yeah. He just saw that this guy has a skill and we need this particular skill to be able to carry on with our work. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I agreed. It wasn't up to three months that they asked me to be here and then handle some of things. And my skill, again, outplayed and I was able to also deliver. I gave them a contract and then they came down, gave me a car and gave me an office Wonderful. without asking me where my certificate, certificate is. is. <laughs> Somebody who was already having a missing script. So by the time my result thing was sorted, I was already a car driver within <laughs> an office paid for. Paid you know? for. So what am I trying to say here? We should learn to play, pay um, less emphasis mm -hmm. on this informal, I mean, formal education formal thing. Education. Your skill mm -hmm. is actually what will help you up the ladder. Okay. We should learn to see that particular skill that is inborn in us, mm. what are you able to do? That you went through a school wall mm. doesn't determine your success rate, yeah. but rather it is what you are able to bring on the table mm. as where you are working or if you want to become the boss of yourself. Okay, that's very true. Yeah, I'm sure no, so not entirely. The funny, the, funny thing, the funny thing is you can gain a skill, you can gain this skill you're mm. mentioning, right? Formal education, formal education as well. Yes, yes. Uh, but then does but, that actually happen in this world that we are in? Now, I, I studied computer science, right. and while I was a student studying computer science, the programming they taught me was basic. Mm -hmm. In a world where people are learning, learning Java, um, I mean, hypertext languages yeah, and yeah, all of that, yeah. and they were teaching me basic, something that is already phased out. I never was able to touch a computer, the computer within the university. <laughs> Somebody who is a computer mm -hmm. student. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, now, yeah. you are now telling this person, leave school, mm -hmm. and then begin to struggle with who? You are a computer student, what can you do? You can't even write a program. <laughs> you can't even repair a computer system. Yeah. You can't even... That's I mean, true. so many things are just wrong when you want to you know, put all of this together. Mm. Because in Nigeria, they are just yeah. opposite okay. ways. Yeah. They are not just working. working and that is the reason why we have teeming unemployed youth every day, you know, coming out into the society. Mm. You went through the school wall, you, the so-called formal education, yes. they gave it to you. That's and you ca true. came out... With no employability skill, you came out with no entrepreneurial skill. You are nowhere, and then you keep causing nuisance mm. for the society. <laughs> That's true. For how long so are we going to continue like that? quickly chip in there, because this, this so-called formal education, is, it, is, is, is that what we really need in Nigeria? Are people really getting what they, they, are, they, are, they are supposed to give to society? Okay, um, he's very right with all his statements. But okay. uh, what, I, what I'm looking at is a factor that... It totally affects um, this education we're talking about, mm -hmm. and it's external. I mean, uh, in every nation, in every um, in every situation, yeah. in every settlement, the economic factor tends to affect every single thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> including the religious aspect as yeah, well. Yeah. But we, we, that's not the topic for today. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're looking at Nigeria as a case study. Mm -hmm. 
and our 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 economy is affecting the 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 idea between why don't we just move towards skill acquisition yeah. as as against um formal education, formal education. Yeah. and there's something a very good friend told me he's a pastor like you know um a coin has heads and tails okay. and no matter what happens even if you split that coin it mm -hmm. will have another head and another tail as well mm -hmm. it was made that way but when you flip it only one face is up mm -hmm. so it, in a way this is kind of an unnecessary dichotomy but at the end of the day, one has to face up at some point. Mm -hmm. So you can pick the coin up again and flip it. And maybe this time it's formal mm -hmm. education that sets up. Yeah. But this compl these complement each other. We, where we are in Nigeria right now is even what leads to this debate in trying to emphasize one against the other, trying to pit one against the other. And you're very correct with why they will never ask you about your, um, yeah. your certificate and degrees. Yeah. In the one point where I was, where, where just before the show, I was just thinking of. Um, uh, Moses and mm -hmm. the, the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And it was God that blessed them with it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, even the living world had to walk before these people. And they were pointing back to Moses mm -hmm. when Christ was like, I am the living mm -hmm. world itself. So people tend to worship things that make them feel good eventually. It's, it's, in, the, it's in our yeah, wickedness, nature, in the wickedness yeah. of our hearts, the Christless ones. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say here is, when you have a certificate that tends to to society that you have gone through what certain you have. good you've yeah. gone through certain yeah. levels and you have acquired so so, yeah. so much knowledge mm -hmm. i mean even someone who does skill acquisition would tend to boast in one day of the capabilities of him mm -hmm. bringing things to life mm -hmm. and i want to point to another analogy again with where i'm coming from i hear this quote of when you teach a man to fish mm -hmm. he won't come begging to fish he won't come begging for fish for all fish, the time yeah. good and that is the essence with formal, formal education, education. Mm -hmm. formal education in, in, let me give an exa example for university uh, uh, situations as against polytechnics. They teach you the theory, the how it comes to be, mm -hmm. the when this happens, mm -hmm. what happens to mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. when that happens, what happens to it, the pros and the cons, the disadvantages and the advantages, what mm -hmm. to expect, what not to expect, mm -hmm. what you need to set up and what you don't need to set up. I mean, it still sounds like skill acquisition, right? But this mm -hmm. is within a confinement for the person who wants to be an agricultural expert, not delving into automobile engineering mm. so that he will not convolute himself of course and this is why formal education also is very necessary mm. because the mind as much as it can multitask the mind needs to be focused on mm. one thing mm. if you're if you're actually mm. focused on agricultural engineering all the pertains to okay. agriculture would delve into it and it's a fusion of agriculture and engineering as well but there's a lot that has to do with engineering electrical engineering mm. which you may not really uh, um, um, fall out of the way while learning agricultural engineering also. Okay. Yeah, so that's the essence of formal, engi uh, um, uh, uh, formal education. education rather. No, but, but, but sorry, sorry, yeah. I actually want to interject yeah, on that. Yeah. Have we not seen that this is not really working? Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, someone like me have a degree in computer science, okay. but then I'm in the agricultural okay. sector. If the formal education is actually doing what then they are meant possible. to do, yeah. because the way the school is structured, which, of course, is perfect. They've tried it in Germany, tried it in Ghana, tried, tried it in China. They are all working there, but it's not working for our yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. What is actually meant to, what we are meant to see is a situation whereby somebody who is in school, first of all, you're able to identify your career path, mm -hmm. like, which is what the formal education is That's meant to help. Exactly. But then you find somebody who, because maybe she likes to see people cry when they give them injections, <laughs> and then so she decides to, to say, I want to become a medical <laughs> doctor. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm yeah, saying. Yes. And then... When, they, when she is in school, the guidance counselor mm. doesn't take the pain to actually find out why this person has actually chosen to be a science student. Yeah. Well, probably the person is struggling with mathematics and all of that. Mm. Now, such a person can never come out and become successful in that chosen exactly. career. Exactly. And that is where formal education has failed. And that is where we are saying, in as much as we've seen that government, in quotes, have not lived up to their responsibility as ensuring um, that the formal education system is what is helping Nigeria's economy by putting people in particular respective professions as where they should be, mm. given their ability. Why can't we now begin to say, mm. okay, fine, let's look at skills. Possibly your passion drives you to a particular skill. Of course. And that's what will make you to become successful. Okay. Whatever you are good at fiddling with is what, will, what you can you'll make something out of it. Of well, course, definitely. definitely. And that well, is skill. We'll take a short break right now and we'll be back in a minute. Worthy by design. On this show, we focus on the journey from girlhood to womanhood and everything in between.
worthy by design. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Crossfire, and we've been looking at a debate between skill acquisition and formal education. And we have our dear brothers here who have been discussing it so far, Mr. Nonso Eziaku and Mr. Chinedu Opara. We thank you so much for your insight so far. Mr. Chinedu, let me come back to you now. Um, People without formal education in our society, uh, like Nigeria, are usually stigmatized. You know, they say, "What do you know?" You know, you, you just uh, marginalize them one way or the other. How can the government or even individuals, uh, organizations, or anything help enlighten others for the need for skill acquisition or even vocational skills? Well, um, I, I think that's, that issue is foundational and in the sense that, like I rightly said earlier, uh, when you look at the form, um, forms of education that we have, education begins from the family. Mm. Now, a parent has that sole responsibility um, to ensure that the upbringing of the child, you understand, is geared towards the success of that child as the child grows. Yeah. But um, you find out that what happens today is where uh, the father is so busy, the mother is so busy, they leave the whole responsibility to the teacher. So it's the teacher that tells you that your son is good in mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. You don't even know. It's the teacher that tells, because you find out that ah, this boy likes to drive car. He must be an engineer. Whenever he's in the house, he's always spoiling my electronics. <laughs> he has to go and study electronics engineering. Mm -hmm. yes. That is where that foundational problem comes from. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody who has no basic education, you know, grow up and begin to lose interest in education. Before that person can find his or her feet, it becomes a problem. And then people who are probably their mates, who have probably gone into uh, for the formal education, as we said, uh, begin to stigmatize them because they will feel like, I'm nothing because this one has gone here. Mm -hmm. But then when you, when you realize that it is not really that much of that formal education. I have education. Yes. Maybe I'm not in school because when you even look at it, the way our education system is structured, so we have monotechnics, we have polytechnics, we have University of Technology, mm -hmm. we have College of Education, mm -hmm. we have University of Agriculture, mm -hmm. we have a, a University for um, uh, Medical Colleges. Mm -hmm. So what am I saying? That they are already separated all of these things. Yeah. So that you can find one of these places mm -hmm. to find oh, how I you place that. yourself yeah. in. Yeah. But then, everybody wants to write jam and just Go enter university. university exactly. And then the universities not helping issues, begin to teach you uh, social sciences in the University of Agriculture. <laughs> Misplaced priorities. Now, this person struggles and then maybe because they cannot struggle and keep up, they leave school, becomes dropout, mm -hmm. and then they begin to stigmatize them. Of course. If you allow yourself to be stigmatized, is your problem mm. because you've not been able to in fact i'm one of the persons who say that any man who is in abject poverty today has no form of education at all mm. any of the three forms of education that i mentioned yeah. because you can't have basic education from your family within your community mm. and then down to maybe the informal one mm -hmm. or maybe the formal education and yeah. you still find still. yourself struggling to survive that means you had no education at all mm. so you're the one who has given yourself out to be stigmatized because you have ability you're not deformed because of course exceptions are the people who have disability issues mm -hmm. but if you were an able-bodied person and uh, god gave you an ability and because you did not go through the walls of education you allow people to stigmatize you then you don't even know where you stand in the society mm -hmm. because like who mentioned earlier we've seen people who did not attend any formal education but then are successful mm -hmm. even here in nigeria so why would you allow yourself in fact we've even seen we've seen people who, because they did not have any formal education, they employ people who had formal education to work for them. <laughs> True. I've employed True. somebody who had masters mm -hmm. when I've not done my masters. <laughs> okay. And I even fired him because he could not give me results. <laughs> Deliver. So what am I saying? I don't think anybody should allow anybody to stigmatize them for God's yeah. sake. You should know what you have and deliver. Exactly. Okay. Mr. Nasser, okay, you want I, to I want to just chip in. Mm. Well, this is not entirely his agreement. I've just, just begged the thought that um, some people who were... Or, People who were successful, who are successful via um, skill acquisition, let me say informal education, mm -hmm. um, 
they, they, they become the citadel of formal education in a sense because they can't just emit, they can't just emanate that knowledge mm. informally also. Mm. It wouldn't work for them. Mm. The, the, the thing with informal education and why formal education is rampant mm. is that the percentages of people who are successful with, uh, from informal education as compared to formal education is not... It's not to tell the fact that if there are more from formal education, formal education works more. Mm. It's, it actually, if, if, we, if we try to skeletize all of this right now, maybe there are 99 people, there are 100 people in a room, and 10 of them were 100 successful people, mm. and 10 of them were successful from informal education. They will most likely employ the rest from formal education mm -hmm. because part of the ideology or psychological effect of um, formal education is to enable you to coexist and work with other people who may have had liking thought as well. Mm -hmm. So, I I in a sense, it's not for comparative reasons. It's most likely for like a balanced kind of reason. Good, yeah, complementary reason. No, so, like sorry, but, but then uh, nobody is discrediting formal education. I, no, I get yes, you. Yes. Nobody is discrediting. But what we are saying is so much emphasis should not be laid on this oh, formal yes. education. Just a mm -hmm. few days ago, I was talking with a girl at Apple here. She is doing this POS thing. And I, I went there to use POS. And then I was asking her, um, like, we're just talking. And she said she's going to go back to school next week. Mm -hmm. And that she's just so sad that it's just College of Education, Zuba. Mm -hmm. That she's hoping that by the time she's done with the NCE, she mm -hmm. will move over for direct entry. I'm mm -hmm. like, why are you doing all of that? So who, who has told you that this one is not going to help you in any way? Yeah. She, I said, no, that she must go to university. Mm -hmm. And then while we were talking, I was not like, okay, do you even know that what you are doing can even pay your way throughout the school? She was like, how? Yeah. What you're doing is the job of a banker. So she didn't still understand. And I said, how much is POS? POS is 25,000 naira. How much is your salary? She said 20,000. And I said, so two months of your salary have, have given you POS. Oh, yeah, that that you can buy one POS. There's even a small one that you link with your phone that is 10,000 naira. Mm -hmm. That you can go back to school and begin to do business of while course. you're studying. And then you are already equipped skill-wise. Exactly. You're already empowered. And then you go through these walls of school. And before you know, you, are you already have centers everywhere. Mm -hmm. And she was looking with, I mean, at me with so much amazement. Yeah. So nobody is discrediting formal education. Yeah. What we are trying to say is this whole emphasis on certificates, yes. we should learn to just reduce yes. it. Now, it's Mr. not helping. Now, Mr. Nonso, you know, uh, with the rate of unemployment, you okay. know, of course, we have so many graduates, and many of them even unemployable. Like he even said, he employed a master student, he even had to fire later on. Um, don't you think that youths should look for ways to actually acquire skills rather than adding to their degrees? They say, oh, I have a first degree, I have a master's, and so on and so forth. Shouldn't they focus more on skills, being able to deliver, and not just having the head knowledge? Yeah, I was getting there, and I understand okay. exactly what you were saying. Mm -hmm. As well as I have been saying, um, it, w w w when we take this lightly, it will eventually lead to the discreditation of, uh, you know, it's possible that you don't discredit skill acquisition mm -hmm. and in the process not discredit formal, formal education as yes. well as seeing what the boots are set up for. Yes, yes. I'm looking at it this way. Um, there's no way if we are one billion in this, okay, let me give Nigeria for instance. Mm. They say we are about 200 million. Yes. There's, no, there's no way that 200 million of us will be rich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not possible. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying we should take advantage of poor people mm. or maybe we should let the informal educated people employ the formal educated people mm. or vice versa. I'm yeah, not dictating yeah. how that yeah, is. Yeah. That is only, that is something only someone who is sovereign can No, but that's him. the choice of a young person to mm. make. Good, you see? Mm. But like Mr. A somewhere else now doesn't know the choice you're making. Mm. And at the end of the day, um, you could tell the story, you could, you could actually even impact on people how the choices you made enabled you to empower him whether he chooses to work for you or whether he chooses... But that is what formal education is meant now, to do. that's my point exactly, that if there were no formal education, there would not be this coexistence of what complements what. Mm. For there to be this complementing of things, and let me just get to the question as well also, about the discreditation of one of these. The emphasis is being placed on... on the emphasis is being placed on mm. certificates as yes. against acquiring skill mm. is better from a delusion. Mm. It's better from a delusion. It's mm. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. The fact that um, maybe I'm going, to, I'm going to place emphasis on the fact that we're colonized. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's one reason. But okay. if we can skip that aside, we've transformed to somewhere we are today. We've been independent for more than 60 years. Yes. It should have led to us empowering the, the informal or the skill acquisition mm -hmm. part of the, uh, the youth. And given that the youth are even exuberant, are even strong at this age, it should have led to that. But why hasn't it led to that? It's for certain reasons. Yeah. 
it is still blind to us and it's amazing and it's shocking as well given that we empower the british economy with thousands of millions of pounds if i'd say mm. to acquire formal education meanwhile we could gain all those skills we have here yeah. but you see if someone is earning and that's why i said that there are external factors that affect this mm. which <laughs> will lead us to another show entirely yeah. but the external factors that affect this that that is shaping what formal education looks like mm -hmm. on its own, mm -hmm. what informal education looks like on its own, mm -hmm. and unnecessarily pitting them against each other when they do complement each other. Okay. So, if I'm still here saying I would love my children to have formal education, it's for a reason, is that it has its own benefits. Mm -hmm. Of course it does. As well as school education has its own benefits. And my brother here is a product of formal education oh and the mm -hmm. other. Yeah. So, he has seen the rainfall, mm -hmm. he can appreciate the sunshine. Mm -hmm. And I have seen sunshine, and I can appreciate the rainfall as well. <laughs> so we, we, are, we are striving towards the perfect balance of having both of them complement well, each other. You notice that in, in Nigeria, usually when you go through formal education, mm -hmm. people tend to go for just white collar jobs, of which is not even available anymore. So don't we, shouldn't we actually tilt towards just acquiring skills? Because the more people are vying for white collar jobs, many people are, just like you said, people are struggling out there on the road mm -hmm. and they don't know they have things they can do by themselves. They're waiting, oh, it's a government job I want. Oh, no, I want to work here, I want to work there. Is that really reasonable? Okay. First of all, I feel um, white collar jobs are, <laughs> it's a fallacy that is dying away very, very quickly. <laughs> okay. Because white collar jobs is like you're working for like the slave master. Yeah. But then again, um, it wasn't always so and that's mm -hmm. why, the way, the way I'm seeing this, because it's not working for now doesn't mean we should just mm -hmm. totally kill it. Kill it yeah. If it's not working for now, probably means there's a deficiency or there's yes. a cancer yes. that can be cut out. Yes. You get. So we 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 should delve into the uh, uh, skill acquisition phase of because there's there, there, there's a lack mm -hmm. and there's, there's a lot of opportunities on the side of on side of skill acquisition. Mm -hmm. But we still need formal education to even know mm -hmm. because my 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 what I adore with formal education is the fact that you're exposed to every nitty-gritty. You could get to know that with skill acquisition. Yeah, yeah. But I love that we approach skill acquisition from a, a from a stage where we have a bank of bank. knowledge. A yes, very, very yes. a great one. So, so you'll not be thrown away by anything you see uh, uh, when, you, when you come about it. Okay. So if I say basic education is in quote formal, mm. but I get your point. Basic mm. education in a sense, it's natural. Mm. There's somebody who has never been to class mm -hmm. in primary school yeah. and never been told A, B, C. Exactly. But trust, the person can find his way around. So <laughs> I'm sure the person, speak, there's probably someone communicate. who is successful mm -hmm. at that. Of course. Because we have this innate ability to learn, like mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. mentioned as well. So, okay. um, the, the thrust for white-collar jobs, if you to hear me out there, uh, it's a, I, I, I work <laughs> for the government. <laughs> so it will sound like something hypocrite to say, yeah. but it's a shame that Nigeria's economy has pushed us to this level. Mm -hmm. I hope there's a way out of it to see where we can okay. uh, uh, steer towards the skill acquisition phase. Okay. Not disregarding the any formal education you're getting. Okay. Because I'll have said you are already supporting him uh, whole hard. All the <laughs> no, 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 but everybody knows that's just the plain truth. It, it, it's plain truth. It's, it's not something that we can't shy. We mm -hmm. can't shy away from it because mm -hmm. this is just what it is. Okay. Yeah. Now, with with Nigeria or the, the state of our government, do you think our economy and our government, of course, stand more to gain with skill acquisition? Yeah, Nigeria actually stand a lot to gain mm -hmm. with skill acquisition. Mm -hmm. Because what, all of this that we are talking about here, if Nigeria wants to get it right today, they just need to go back to the education policy. Mm -hmm. Because the education policy captures skills and then, of course, captures certificates. Okay. The certificate is actually what shows, the, the actually different mm -hmm. things in it is mm -hmm. chosen professions. Yes. There are certain areas that are just for professional, mm -hmm. medical, yeah. legal, yeah. and then um, uh, technology. Every other aspect, management and all of that, those are just prerequisite skills that you yeah, actually yeah, require. Yeah. So it, it's something that has to be done. You want people to get job, mm -hmm. equip them, empower them skill-wise. Yeah. And that is just ensuring that by the time they are in school, they are exposed, exposed. to diverse yeah. skills. Yeah. And they will see where their passion mm -hmm. leads them to. Mm -hmm. So somebody who is in school should understand that through agriculture, for instance, that one can make livelihood. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is in school should understand that through clothes making, one can acquire livelihood. Mm -hmm. That through cooking food, that one can acquire livelihood. Mm -hmm. And not just when you've wasted your time. I mean, I, I, I get so angry when I find um, somebody who is more than 30, 35 years still struggling 
with students at the university <laughs> level, year two, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be asking myself, what are you struggling for? Mm. Is it that you don't have any skill out there? Mm. So I think government should really, really look at um, the education policy and begin to implement those aspects that has to do with mm -hmm. skills. Okay. And then, of course, there are skill centers scattered all over the country. Lion follow. Nothing just, is just happening. Name, just, yeah, just, but just as state name, government, so there are agencies who are in charge of developing skills at rural levels. Mm. All of them are just there collecting federal allocations and doing almost nothing. And then, of okay. course, the church yes. can also help. Church is also a part of government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you empower young people in your church, skill-wise, they create a job. And then, of course, the, the revenue will first of all even come back to church. The church is, and then, of is, course, in turn, go to government. Not just even and then we are even seeing how we are seeing, you know, cutting down on unemployment rates and then creating more jobs and empowering people and reducing crime. Mm -hmm. So I think it's one area that government really has to look into. Okay, Mr. Nonso, the final note, you know, uh, for the government, what do you think the government can actually do now? Should we still create more universities? I mean, of course, we even have so many of them already. Should we still keep doing that or diversify, uh, put more focus on skill acquisition? Oh, we clearly, we clearly need to diversify. Another issue I was even thinking of was, while he was talking, I was thinking of like the complex math I used to learn, like the y, the x, and all that. What, what did I really need them for? But <laughs> I, 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 I've come all this way to figure out what I need them for. But mm -hmm. I was even thinking again, like um, for the for the sole benefit that um, skill acquisition will lead to curbing crime, like he said, mm. because I, if we when we do all the math and when we do all our detective work, we mm. tend to find out that when people are unemployed, mm -hmm. mostly because there's something they could do, mm -hmm. but they don't have the room. Uh, to do it without like really uh, pushing barriers or breaking walls and the rest, mm -hmm. they tend to do it the crooked means of because course. it's it just satisfies the let me get it done and it's mm -hmm. not enough. It's not enough at all. Mm -hmm. So it's like the government has created a room where we just like eat ourselves out till let's see who dies first, and mm -hmm. it's not really good. But then again, for the fact that like creating skill acquisition or empowering skill acquisition could even uplift the individual on his or her own, mm -hmm. it's it's actually a very good avenue. And uh, th there's, I don't even know if there's something you really touched on that, but mm. it's the way it's been made to look, formal education looking all polished, while skill yes. education looking unpolished yes, and exactly. all that. Th there's part blame. I could blame also, I could blame um, the individual who sees the, the mm -hmm. little they do as mm -hmm. something unpolished and the rest. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not good enough because you, when you're blaming a balloon, you have to keep puffing and your cheeks will hurt and it's mm -hmm. small, but it literally gets big. So... Mm -hmm. You, you start from there first, and then you, 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 you get on to be bigger than that. Yes. Yeah. So it's, nothing ever looks quite, as far as, you're any, as, far as it's legit, mm -hmm. as far as you're not trying to cheat other people and the rest. Mm -hmm. Because there's people who are cheating other people and they call it skill acquisition. Mm -hmm. No, please, we're not supporting any of that. <laughs> so I think the government should indeed empower this mm -hmm. certain aspect as well. And then it's not like people who are involved in skill acquisition should not pay attention to the government. Mm -hmm. Well, the little the government... Uh, um, provides as regards empowering skill acquisition, they could take benefits of that. I remember, uh, um, I think it was Good Luck Village Jonathan's uh, administration. Towards the end, there was this you win thing, and I know people who really started mm -hmm. toothpick businesses. Yes, there are people yes. who started food delivery businesses mm -hmm. and the rest. But it starts from somewhere okay. eventually. Mm -hmm. In case people feel it's informal and there's no nitty gritty to that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's management, like you said, as much as the great side. If you don't know how to manage, all your yes. certificates are in track. Yes, so, of course. So it's, it still goes together. Yeah. Well, we thank you both very much for this insightful discussions. I'm sure youths out there are grateful and will be looking for ways to empower themselves daily. If the government cannot do it, each person still has potential within them they can muster okay. up to become useful in our society. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has indeed been a delightful time uh, discussing this topic. Unfortunately, our time is up. We do hope you have been enriched. We appreciate our dear brothers who have taken time and contributed immensely to this discussion. It has really been a pleasure having you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Our dear viewers, please do take note that both skill acquisition and formal education is a prerequisite in these contemporary times. It can go pari passu. One of the many failures of our educational system is that Youths graduate with certificates and degrees and still remain unemployable. Our system is bewildered with so much corruption. So even those without qualifications seem to occupy prestigious offices 
and eventually still control the graduates. Youths need to rise up, do all that is necessary to gain the edu education and of course the skills to help them remain relevant in our ever-changing society. Till next time, stay blessed and stay safe. Goodbye.